we're done with the first quarter. How do you think the first quarter went, <laughs> and how did you guys do? Well, I think first quarter market did okay, right? Uh, we came out a little uh, deep and uh, recovered. Like you said, the PMI number looks good. Uh, I think we'll carry on a little bit longer. We did very well uh, in the first quarter, but our focus is probably not on so much on the macro pictures. Mm. We tend to look at the differences between the companies. Mm. Uh, I think, yeah. yeah. I was sorry. going to ask you, you said, you know, trading on policy impulse is a recipe of losing money. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's such well, a strong well, word. Yeah, yeah. But, but, so really we, really, we shouldn't be looking at those policy signals is one thing. Well, I think the problem with that is one is, firstly, we don't know the magnitude of policies. And secondly, we don't know how market react to it. Uh, I mean, uh, can we really front run policies? I mean, do we know how market react to each policy come out? Uh, my 30 year experience telling me no. Mm. So I would prefer focus on fundamentals. If you think the economy continue to be um, not so strong, not so weak, not so hot, not so cold, I think that it's the best hunting ground for alpha. Okay. That's where the difference between companies start to show the difference. Yeah. Right. Well, let's, let's talk about fundamentals. We're coming out of earnings season. We're going into first quarter earnings season at some point. How do fundamentals look? Which sectors do you think have the best earnings visibility? Yeah, absolutely. I think the you know year on year comparison because lower base first quarter last year, first quarter this year gonna look okay. Uh, the thing is um, how much uh, the investor will interpret that. Yep. How, what market gonna react to that? I, I think it's I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. Uh, but uh, looking forward to the second half of this year, the base is much higher, and also you got a U.S. election coming up. China bashing is the usual easier way. Hmm in terms of politics. So I think the volatility will come in uh, probably July, August. But for the next two or three months, I think we're okay. People have been skeptical about the scope and depth of this earnings recovery, right? When you have big names like BYD, Wuxi, that seem to be quite disappointing in some ways. I mean, yeah. are you finding pockets of still, you know, where you know, we're seeing a bit more in terms of earnings recovery than others? Uh, yeah, like I mentioned during our uh, break earlier, uh, in terms of AI, for example, we okay. talk about AI. Uh, the components, the hardware of AI, where China still supply a lot of it, that's doing very well. Mm. You know, if you look at the first, um, well, the, the last year numbers and also guidance for this quarter and next quarter, uh, it's very tied to the AI spending and so on and so forth. That's doing very well. But at the same time, on the flip side of it, uh, the application of AI is still early stage. And also, those companies probably tend to trade much higher. They tend to be software companies. They tend to trade much higher multiples, uh, given the expectations, you know, AI applications. So in that space, even the AI space, uh, we see there are positive and negatives. Mm -hmm. And the other se se sector we look at is uh, PC versus smartphones. Mm -hmm. PC have been in a slump for over two years now, after the COVID or COVID spending where the yeah. US buying a lot of PCs, work from home and so on and so forth. And then after that, you know, people don't change the PC every three months, right? Mm. Usually the cycle every two or three years. We come out of the bottom now. It's a cyclical industry. I'm not saying it's gonna be uh, organic growth for 10 years, mm. but cyclical. But having said that, smartphones probably far more behind that curve. Right? And also smartphone competition in terms of AI is still kind of unknown. And also in terms of market competition landscape, there are three major PC makers in the world. I don't have the name names, but mm -hmm. I guess you know. But yeah. in terms of smartphone, there's just so many. Mm. Uh, very saturated competition. So I'm looking at, from our point of view, we'll look at the PC versus smartphone. We'll see Alpha there too. Okay. And uh, just uh, the premise there is PC outperforms smartphones over... Just give us a give us a time frame for that next few months. Oh, we tend to look at it in terms of years, one okay. or two years. One to two years. Mm. So okay. you're you're basically saying this is a market where it's still about tactical opportunities. But even if the the data starts to look a little bit better, should I be looking more medium term at how this performance is going to look like in the next maybe three to five years, more than just kind of what I can just talk about yeah. in the next three weeks or months? Or three days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the, the, the policy is probably, like you mentioned earlier about QE, mm -hmm. I just want to throw in one way to look at that. Um, you see, recently Asia has done very well, but probably got something to do with the weakening yen as well, yuan and yen. 
Yeah. Right. It's my experience in the past with the Mercari in the 90s. I feel I understand when you have weakening currencies, your local stock market do very well, tend to do very well. I mean, remember what happened to Turkey for the last 12 months, right? <laughs> right. When the yeah. currency went through and then, the, you know, mm. so uh, this is a backdrop. And then the question is, uh, is China going to do QE? What's, if they do QE, what's going to happen to the currency? Remember, China has this mega a mission is interna internationalization of renminbi. When you do QE, what happened to the, to the currency? Well, you have weakening currencies. Yeah. Would that serve the purpose of internationalization of renminbi? Probably not. You want a stable currency in that environment. You want people more, more, more people use it for trades, for, for reserve, for other purposes. So I think we're in the trading range, if you ask me, in terms of currency also for the market. Is there now a real risk, Michael, that the Fed's going to abandon three cuts this year, what they're projecting in the dots? Or even no cuts this year. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, I feel it's probably going to be one cut. They have to show their hands. And then you get into November election in the U.S. It will be too political to cut, too close to that. So sometime June, July, August, I don't know the FOMC timetables anymore, but I feel like they're going to be one cut. Um, and after that, I think they're going to leave it off. Yeah. Does, does the delay in the rate cuts also delay the recovery in this general Chinese equity market? I think this is a pressure. I mean, you have um, higher U.S. rates. Mm. Generally speaking, it's tightening bias. Uh, but having said that, you know, um, we we'll see what the BOJ is going to do. I think a lot of uh, hinted on their movement. Mm. If they intervene, which I don't think going to be anything major, uh, because economy it's okay but not that strong yeah i feel like you're still gonna have weakening currencies in asia well, why do you think the yen is so weak does it come down to structural demographics or is it just more of like a slow adjustment that we're seeing here nothing really changed right I mean, if you talk about the demographics uh, the leveraging and that's how it continues right mm -hmm. the japanese not getting any younger uh, because the market's, uh, you know, up, doubled. So I, I think the structural change is going to be with us for a little while longer. But what's driving the Japanese market, I think people kind of miss out. If you look at the three components of GDPs, right, the one most important one driving the uh, uh, Japanese market is capital formation. There's so much investment going to Japan for whatever reasons. Okay, going to Japan, that's driving the GDP. It's probably not so much of a consumption or exports, mm. Mm. but capital formation, where China, on the other hand, is kind of a lack of now. Mm. Yeah, well, let's, I want to pivot back to China. Let's say we're 15% up from the bottom. Do you think the bottom's behind us, or is that... Are we, uh, so we're in a range. My, my question is whether or not the worst is over. Um, if you take a look over three, five, or ten-year horizon, I think we're stuck in the trading range for that long. Wow! If you believe, well, if you look at the uh, the Japan's last decade, for example, for reference, it did trade in that range, even in USD terms, not in yen terms, right. for a long time, mm -hmm. and then broke lower. So uh, I think we're probably going to be in the similar situations. We're, uh, that's why I'm saying uh, focus the differences between the companies. It's for a lot more interesting right. to trade in well, and out. Let me just ask, the, what's the premise there? Why do you think we'll be in a, in a range here for, for 10 years? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious, right? We have a demographic problem, people aging. I know you've got a property leveraging. You just mentioned country garden. They're going to pay their coupons on time and release results on time. So this is going to be with us. This will take some time to digest. Mm. Okay. Um, what are we missing? I mean, we, we feel like we've covered a lot yeah. here right now. Is there something that you think the market is underpricing at the moment? Um, Again, back to the fundamentals, bottom-up, okay. we see opportunities. Yeah. Right? We're not so much into the banks and properties, but having yeah. said that, export-related, AI-related, I mean, even um, home appliances. I, I don't know whether you guys are picking up really MyD, my uh -huh. uh, higher, it's been doing yeah. very well. I mean, 40%, yeah. 50% for exports. Yeah. So the global economy doing okay. I mean, those fridges and washing machines is not exactly on the sanction list per se. Mm -hmm. They're not that sensitive. And Chinese manufacturing power is great.
And there's a yep. whole upgrade cycle and program going on too. Absolutely, yeah. right? Okay. You know, the, 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 the going for a higher, more expensive household products, right? A different brand, you release a different sub brand. You don't relate to them anymore. You think this is a European brand or something? You know, all of a sudden it's 50% premium. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you what brand oven is in the Liang household, <laughs> but we can save it for the next conversation. This consumption upgrade is really the peg is Michael Liang up there. Michael Liang, thank you so much. It was great to, great to have you on the show. Thank you.